Hey I'm Max and in this video I will show you how to make a simple level system for your game. You will be able to load different level from your main menu by simply clicking the level button. Let's start right away, so first we will make the struct for the level data. For this simply right click, go into blueprint and then structure. Now you can call this structure whatever you want, I'll call it level data. Then you can open it up and inside you should have a new var with boolean. You can add a couple variables, however many you want for your level data. For this tutorial I'm just going to add a few. You can click add variable at the top to add one, just like this. And if you need to delete one you can simply click the little trash icon. So my first variable will be the name of the level, then a variable for the map that will be loaded from this level. Then I will add a variable that will hold the level of the enemies in that level. And finally one that will save whether or not this level has been done before. So I can remove the other two. The name will be a name. The map will also be a name. The enemy level will be an integer. Obviously in here you put whatever data you need for your level system that you want to make for your game. Okay, so our level data struct is done. Now I'm going to use a game instance to have my array of level datas. So I can access it from everywhere. Even if I open different level, it will be the same. So simply right click, go into blueprint class, all classes, and then search for game instance. Click game instance right here and then select and call it whatever you want. I'll call it BP underscore game instance. Now it's really important that you go into edit, project settings, and then you search for game instance and you change the game instance here class to the one you just created. Otherwise your game instance will not be enabled. Then you can close the setting and open up your game instance. In here we want to go into variable, add one, call it levels. And the type of that variable will actually be our level data struct we just made. And then you have to go to the right in your variable. Click the little icon to the right of variable type and change it to an array which will let you add multiple ones. Now if you compile you should see in your default value zero elements. You can click the little plus next to it to add a level and then when you open it with a little arrow you can see the name, map and every variable you add in your struct. So let's add a few just to test. I'll call it level 1. The map will be a test. My enemy level will be 2. And of course, by default, it will not be done. Okay, so I added two more levels just to test things out. And then the rest, I'll just fill it with a couple of empty levels just to test the grid. Then since in my levels, I use the map test and test two, I simply created a little level test, which is the same thing without the boxes here and then test two without the cylinders here. I also want to go in my game instance and add one more variable, which will be the in level, which is the level that you're currently in. This variable type will be an integer and I will simply have a single one, not an array. Then I will create a user interface, widget blueprint, a basic user widget and call it menu. I will also create another widget for the button of the level and I'll just call it level button. So in my level button, I'll simply put a button with a text on it. I don't want this to fill the whole screen, so I'll just put desired and it will be the size of the text. Then I will make the text a variable so I can change it when I build the button. Then you can simply click at the top right on the graph to switch to the graph. And when you go on the graph, you will have a bunch of events like pre-construct and construct. In my case, I'll simply use construct. And in here, I simply want to set the text to the data of my level. So set text. But now how do I get the data of the level? Well, I'll simply add a variable. I'll call it level data. Then the variable type, I'll set it to my level data struct and I will set it to instance editable and expose on spawn. So when I create this button, I will have a little variable at the bottom to set my level data and it will be automatically loaded in this variable. Now I can drag this level data, drag from it, break, and then I have my name, map, enemy level and done. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to display the data in a text, but you might want to do better effects for your game. That's kind of up to you. In my case, I'll just do a format text and I'll put every variable. If you don't know how format text done, you can just type what you want. And when you want to put a variable, just put brackets and then the name you want to give it. And when you press enter, they all go at the bottom and you can simply link them up. So just like that, when my button is constructed, it should display all of the variables of the level data. And I also want to go back to designer, go back on my button and at the bottom unclick, click the little plus. And on click what I want to do is get my game instance, 
then I will cast it to my BP game instance I just made and I will set the in level variable to the level we are currently at. So for this, we also need the button to know which level it is. So I will add another variable, I'll call it level ID, then change it to an integer and same thing, instance editable and expose on spawn. Then I will drag this variable in. So it will tell the game instance which level was just loaded. And then we can simply open level by name and drag in the level data, break, map name. So it will set the end level in the game instance and then open the level. We can compile and save this. Now let's go in our menu widget. In our menu widget, we have multiple options on how to display the level buttons. You might want to use a grid, a horizontal box, a vertical box. In this case, I'll put a grid because I think it's the most difficult one. So I'll show this. Let's use a uniform grid panel, drag it in our widget. Then we want to set it as a variable so we can use it in the graph. Then we go in the graph and then on construct, we simply want to get the game instance, cast to our BP game instance, just like we did in the button. And then from this, we want to get our levels. So we will get all of the level data that we have in our game instance right here, all of the ones we just input. So this way, if we add anything in here, it will automatically be added to the menu. Then we want to do a for each loop on the level array so we can look through all of the levels and then for each one we want to create a widget which will obviously be our level button widget and you can see the two variables we just put as a expose on spawn they appear here so now we can simply drag in our level data and our id next we can drag in our uniform grid panel if you don't see it it's because you didn't put it as a variable at the top right right here then we can drag from it add child to uniform grid right here and we can simply add our level button we just made now for the row and column it depends how many you want to put per row for the row you want to take the id and divide by the amount you want per row so let's say three per row then i drag it in row and for the column you want to use a modulo which is the percent sign and then put the same amount so let's say three and this will make it so you will have three per row then we can simply make a main menu level and in our empty level we can simply create our widget and put it on the viewport so you have multiple ways to do this in my case i'll just open the level blueprint and in my level blueprint on being in play i'll create widget i'll create my menu widget and add it to the viewport compile and now if i open my main menu i should see all of my levels Obviously, this doesn't look very good. You should make it look better for your game. I'm just showing you the, how it works. So you can see I have level 1, map test, enemy level 2, done, false. Boss level, test 2, enemy level 3, done, false. And then a few others just to show that it goes down after 3 in a row. So if I click on the first one, it should open the level 1, which has the cylinders. If instead I click on the level 2, it should open the other one without the cylinders. So you can see it opens the right map. And now if we want to do something like set the enemy level, since we said enemy level 2, 3, 4. So how do we get this value in the level? Well, for this, you can make a new blueprint class, make it a game mode, call it whatever you want, blueprint game mode. Then inside of your game mode on begin play, you could get game instance, cast to BP game instance then we can simply get the levels get the level that we are currently at so in this case it's a uh, in level that we set in the level button blueprint right here so we set our in level before loading it so now when it's loaded we have the in level which is the level we just loaded so once we get that level we can simply get all of the data for the level we just loaded such as the enemy level. So in this case, I'll just print it, but you could do whatever you want with it. So I'll just print my enemy level. And now I just have to set in my project settings, kind of like the game instance, the default game mode to my game mode I just created. And now whenever I load a level, it should print. There you go, two for the level enemy. And in this case, three for this one and four for this one. Now, obviously, you can add any kind of function to this that you want. 
For example, I could create one, finished level, and then when it runs, I simply get the level we just finished, and I set it as done, so I can do set member in level data, and then I can go in the default category here, done, and I set it as true. Now if I compile this, I can go in any sort of blueprint, like here I just have a cube, and when I hit this cube, I can get the game instance, then cast it to pp game instance, and in this game instance, I can call the finish level we just made. And let's go back to our game instance. And after finishing a level and sending it to done, we can open level by name and open back our main menu. So now if I place my test actor right here, which is the one that calls the finish level, then I go back on my main menu. I hit play. I go on my map. You can see enemy level two. Now if I touch this cube, it goes back to the main menu and you can see now in the top left it says done true for level 1. I can also put this actor in my level 2 right here and then if I go on my main menu, I hit play, I go on level 2, I finish it, now you can see level 2 it says done. However, if I close the game and reopen it, you can see the value is not saved. That's because we need to create a save game which I will explain in another video. But you can see now all of your levels are here, you can get the enemy level when opening, you can see it prints 4, you can finish a level, and also at any time you can simply go in your game instance, add a couple others with any sort of data you want, and then compile, and when you open your main menu it will automatically load it in. So I think this is a very good system, and also since all of the data is inside a struct, you can easily save it in a save game. Thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed, if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe.